So let's go over solutions on fixing your computer when it comes to freezing. I'm gonna be putting this into two categories, hardware related issues and then software related issues. I'm gonna to touch on software first. So let's get on the desktop and get into it. So we'll start on the Windows desktop and go into Mac and Linux as well. We'll just right click this, hit Power Options. From Power Options, just make sure Sleep is turned to Never. Uh, and then also I like to go to Advanced Power Settings and just kind of change this to High Performance as I like to actually shut down my machine. I highly recommend you not put your computer into Standby or Hibernate mode. I really dislike these modes a lot. If you go into Change, uh, the actual plans, you can actually go into the advanced portion of this and turn off like putting your hard disk to sleep. If you're having hard disk issues, which we'll get into here in a little bit, you might want to disable that. Uh, obviously, USB suspend setting, usually I always disable this as turning things off on USB sometimes can cause issues with uh, USB device responsiveness. And then also just making sure it's not throttling my GPU. Uh, and then when I'm done with my computer for the day, I shut it down. Uh, but I, I just want to just showcase that because a lot of people just put them in suspend or hibernate mode and think they've rebooted their machine uh, or even shut it down. But a proper shutdown, just going here, going to shut down and just shutting it fully down at the end of the day is always my recommended method uh, in this regard. And it'll save a lot of freezes on Windows. But with that said, let's go over to Linux. And in Linux, uh, we'll just pull up a power manager. Uh, this can be different on whatever distribution you're on. Very simply, make sure the sleep button does nothing. There's not very many options in Linux, which is fine uh, because this makes it really simple. So I always like to say, hey, what does each mode do? And you can change like the sleep mode to do either sleep or hibernate. Again, if you have suspend or hibernate as your only options, I would just say suspend over hibernate as hibernate is known to cause some issues down the road. but Again, I like to fully shut down my system no matter what operating system I'm on. But in Mac, there's one more option that you should know about that sometimes can cause problems. So in the Mac box, if we look into our power options, just go into system preferences, and then under energy saver, you click on that. There's one big thing here called enable power mat nap, and sometimes this can cause issues. So it depends on what you're doing. This is a bit of a hackintosh. So uh, it definitely did cause issues, the power nap functionality, so I made sure to disable that. But uh, that is power management on the software side of things. However, now we need to go onto the hardware side and discuss how it does power management. So I'm gonna simply just reboot my machine here and we're gonna go into the BIOS. You're gonna see it at the startup here. And usually you can press delete or F2 to get into your BIOS setting. Just kind of tap it, don't hold it down. Uh, unless it's an Asus laptop, I think those actually require you to hold F2 as soon as you turn, turn it on. So a little bit, little bit funny. Um, but anyways, in here, in the AMD Ryzen uh, CPUs, there's a very common thing that happens that causes you to basically get a ton of lockups and freezes on uh, first gen boards. So if you're still running a generation one Ryzen and you're having frequent lockups, this is probably your issue. And I've noticed this both in ASUS boards like this one and also Gigabyte has it as well. And even though I've updated the BIOS, it still happens. So if we go into advanced and usually it's called AMD CBS, under AMD CBS, there's gonna be something called power supply idle control. And this is usually set to auto by default. So you can actually change this to typical. And once you change it to typical current idle, all my lockup issues went away. Now, if you don't have this, the specific thing that you're looking in here that has problems is C state six. And uh, some BIOSes have more features under the advanced. And sometimes you can actually just disable C state six and that will fix your issue in a lot of the first gen and even some of the second gen uh, AMD chips I've seen when they're using an older board. So. Very important to note for you AMD users out there. Now for you Windows users out there, a lot of your lockups could also be from viruses. So if you're running a Windows desktop like this and you're seeing a lot of pop-ups and those types of things and just general sluggish behavior, uh, you probably look at your task manager, go into performance, 
see how many tasks you're actually running in here. So if I go to CPU, you'll see I'm running about 108. If you're getting this over probably 170 to 200 running processes right on startup, chances are you got some shenanigans. You definitely have way more stuff running than you need to, and it's gonna cause some issues. So definitely get into here, look at your running processes. If you have a voluminous amount of uh, processes, definitely look at running Tron scripts. My recommendation, uh, I'll put a link up in the description, run that on there, clean out that Windows box. If you're still having problems after that, it might be time to actually take it to a repair shop and let the professionals take care of that. Uh, just go to a local one. I highly recommend a lot of mom and pop ones typically give you the best service. Uh, I don't really like a lot of the corporatized repair shops as a lot of times they're just trying to sell you a new computer. So with all that said, let's move on to hardware issues. All right, so in this one, I'm gonna show a tool called Parted Magic. This isn't for a free tool, but it is a fantastic tool to have. It runs about $11. I'll run a link in the description. It is Linux based, but it has a ton of tool sets to fix um, Mac, Windows, and uh, Linux systems. So I really like how they package things up in Parted Magic to where pretty much you can fix any system with its tool set. The reason why we're using Parted Magic 2 is mainly because this type of system with Parted Magic, you want to be outside of your operating system so you can do proper testing of your hardware. So it's laid out much like Windows. If you just hit this, you can actually go ahead and start looking at the different utilities to actually run. So the very first thing I'd like to do is come into system information, run a hard disk health inspection. This right here will just basically say, hey, does this disk have any issues? And if you do have issues or errors on your disk, back up your data, put a new disk in. I don't mess around when it comes to hard disks. Once you start getting bad sectors and smart errors, uh, which smart is what actually is like a, a basically an index of this disk to say, hey, this is how many errors I've had. So once you start getting those types of errors, it's best just to replace the disk. So we can actually click this and just run some self-tests right into Part of Magic and see what's going on. A lot of times too, with a failing system, I don't even need to run the test. I can just go into the attributes portion and see, hey, what kind of errors do I have here? Do I have any failures? Do I have a lot of things in the value column that is causing problems? And just kind of see. Also, another cool thing is you can see the power on time or how long it has actually been up. So what I usually do is just come in here, do a short self-test. This usually is sufficient enough. The long ones will take probably an hour or so, but usually when you run into a bad drive, it doesn't take long at all. So you can see here, short offline, this specific hard disk hasn't seen much life. It's only got 4,000 or so hours of runtime. Obviously on SSDs, which a lot of people have, the lifespan is a very important metric because there's only so much read and writes that can happen on those disks before they will fail. They can't last forever. They're only meant to read and write so many times. Same with traditional disks. As a good rule of thumb, about five years of power on time is when I just go, okay, it's time to replace the disk because one, usually there's better disks on the market and two, it's probably prone to failure after about five years of power on time. So once you've done the hard disk test, the other thing to test is the memory. So we're gonna actually reboot again uh, as you can't access the memory test within the parted magic uh, environment, but it's on the actual boot uh, menu itself. So let's go ahead and reboot. And then from here, you'll see something called memtest86. This is pretty much the de facto standard when it comes to memory. So this will go through, run through everything, check to see if you get any errors in here. If you do run into errors and you wanna isolate that down, you might need to run this test a couple times uh, if you, don't, you aren't able to isolate it to a specific memory slot. That means testing one stick at a time. However, a lot of times it will tell you, hey, it's in dim slot one or dim slot two, and you know, hey, that's the bad memory module. But memtest is a fantastic tool, one that I always run whenever I suspect uh, freezes might be happening because of some old memory or maybe some bad memory. Okay, so now there's two more things I wanna go over, but I can't really show this because you actually need to be physically at your computer. Uh, the first one is a bad hardware such as a power supply unit or the motherboard itself. 
look for at your capacitors on there. If you have any bubbled capacitors, definitely check that out. You can, might be able to send that under a warranty repair. Chances are you're probably going to just be replacing that motherboard unless you're good at soldering and then you might be able to replace that capacitor. Uh, other aspects that you might check as well is overheating. If your system has bad fans and it doesn't have proper airflow, it can overheat and that will cause freezes. Also, if it's been years since you've actually cleaned your fans, clean them uh, in the same realm. If you haven't actually taken your heat sink and fan off and reapplied thermal paste, I've had thermal paste literally just basically turn to dust after being on for five years and it's just not good. It's not able to transfer that heat from the processor to the heat sink and it causes overheating, which leads to freezes. So look at those as causes as well. And that is pretty much what could cause a freeze in pretty much any computer, no matter what it is. These are all very common prod problems and these are the tools I use to fix them. But let me know your thoughts down below. Did I miss anything? Well, let me know in a comment. And a big shout out to all the Chris Titus members. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.